By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and also welcome at the Vendetta, the local game store where I'm playing against Yoop today face to face. I love it. He is bringing a blue aggro deck to the table with all the cards that you expect in these type of decks. Surrender Befreeds, Flying Man, Unstable Mutations, Lord of Atlantis's Psionic Blasts, Counter Spells, it's all there. And what I love about these type of decks is they're quite easy to build on a budget level as well. Most of the cards that he's playing have been reprinted. So if you like this deck, make a reprint cheap version out of it and, you know, take it to a tournament, you'll love it. You can win against like very, very powerful decks with this uh, with this deck. And uh, I'm playing against this deck with my living plane deck. This version is red and green. It's basically a land destruction deck. I'm playing Stone Rain, I'm playing Ice Storm. So early on, I'm already attacking the mana base of my opponent. And then I'm playing a living plane. So what living plane does, it makes all the lands 1-1 uh, creatures as well. And when they're 1-1 creatures, they're super vulnerable. So a lot of my cards are focused on that. Like Pyrotechnics, for example, can take out four lands, right? When Living Plane's on the table. So that is insane. So I'm just wanting to destroy all his land. I'm just evil land destroyer. Um, I don't have deck photos of these decks. That's why I'm showing it right here. That also means that we're going to, going to continue straight to the actual games. We're going to start here with game one. It is a best of five. Let's see how I do against the aggro blue of Yoop. Game number one of this best of five. I'm starting with a Mishra's Factory. So I'm playing with my living plane red green land destruction deck. Playing against Yoop, who's playing with Mono Blue Aggro. Look at that strip mine taking care of my factory. But I've got another one passing the turn. Now, ideally for me, I would have loved an opening with uh, one green and then a Birds of Paradise. But it's not meant to be, I guess, attacking for two here. Going to put him on 18. There's the second blue. So now Yoop can counter. So I've got to be careful with my next move. What am I going to do here? Playing a strip mine. Okay, stripping blue. And probably, yeah, going to attack again for two, putting him on 16. So, so far it's going okay. Hopefully next turn I can play a Stone Rain or an Ice Storm. That will be quite good. No, I'm just passing the turn. Missing a land drop. This is bad news for me. There's a Surrender Perfreed. Now I'm starting to get into trouble. Need to have a land drop. But I'm just passing the turn. Yoop going to 15. Another surrender. Oh, this is bad. And now the hurting starts. Attack for 317. Next turn, attack for 6, perhaps. Discarding a Birds of Paradise. This is bad. If I would have just picked up a green source, I could have played out that bird. Gonna drop to 11. The double attack of the surrenders. Now I really need a mana source. Okay, now I find the Mox Emerald. Perhaps discarding the birds was a bad decision. Maybe I've got another one in hand though. And remember, it's difficult with my deck to get rid of a 3-4 flyer because of that 4 toughness. I mean, I've got bolts, but that's only 3 points of damage. Now, I do have pyrotechnics, but that's 5 mana sorcery speed. So that's going to take a while. But I don't have access to like terror, to swords, to plowshares, to Blast. I just don't have those cards in this color combination. Playing out a Birds of Paradise. There's a Psionic Blast. Is it on? Yep, it's on my life total. That makes more sense. I'm going to drop to seven. I mean, he is taking a lot of damage from his Serenips, but he's easily going to make it. And he's attacking with both Serenips. I mean, I've got to chump one, right? And then I'm going to drop to one. Or, or, sorry, drop to four. Or i got to take the full risk and just go to one. Because he's got side blasts anyway. So with four, I'm dead. On one, I'm dead. So... Obviously, it depends on what I have in hand. I think I'm toast regardless of my decision here. Yeah, I'm going to just go for the risk. Going to try to play towards my outs. Yeah, there's a side blast. So even if I would have jumped one, I still would have died. So super short game one. Luckily, it's the best of five. So I've got time enough to take revenge here. So let's shuffle up and go to game number two. Game number two. Yeah, there, there wasn't much to do for me in, that, in game one. I mean, the start was okay-ish, but then I missed those land drops. I even had to discard a Birds of Paradise. I mean, you know it's not going well if you got to discard a Birds. And maybe I shouldn't have kept the hand. I guess green mana is quite important for me. Here we see the hand of my opponent. Ooh, Soaring, Phantasmal Forces. Love to see Phantasmal Forces. 
And also a Lord of Atlantis and a Counterspell. That is really good. He can have a turn two Phantasmal Forces. This is okay. Lana Elves turn one. It can go into Ice Storm turn two. So it's actually looking good for me. Also got a Crumble for the Soul Ring. So it looks like I've got some good weapons here. Because there's the Soul Ring. I believe I saw a Crumble. So I can Crumble the Soul Ring here. There's a Taiga. Yeah, crumbling the soul ring. So I'm going to put him on 21. Attacking, put him back on 20 and pass turn. Now, of course, another line of play would have been to uh, play an ice storm on the island. It's kind of hard because if you play it on the island, the advantage is that he cannot counter or play Lord of Atlantis. But then he can play like a Surrender Perfeet, for example, which is a big problem for me. So I really wanted to prevent that from happening. Tapping three, probably going to play the ice storm. Here. Yeah, ice storm. But, I mean, it's not too bad here for you because, I mean, at least he's got the Lord. There's another blue. He can just attack. Put me on 18. And it's just too bad that the, you know, Soaring can stick for him because then we could have seen the Phantasmal Forces. So, hopefully, we see that later in the game. Ooh. Yeah, Counterspell on that. That makes sense. Playing a Taiga. Attacking him for one. Putting him on 19. And passing to turn. So I have that Triskelion in hand. So I really want to want to get to that Trike. I've got five mana. If I can find another land, I can play my Triskelion. Okay, that's pretty good, actually. Tapping. Okay, I've got more land destruction. Another counter spell, though. So I'm countering. He's countering this the land destruction away, but that does mean that, um, you know, there's a lesser chance of him also having a counter spell when I play my Trike. Which is, of course, very important. But now he's got three mana. There's the Surrendip, though. Surrendips are so good. I need to put some City in the Bottles in the sideboard. There is a Soul Ring. Okay, now I can play out my Triskelion. Already had enough mana, by the way. So there's the Triskelion. Problem here is my hand's empty. And my opponent has that Flyer. But if I can maybe, you know, if he attacks, I can attack with my trike, hopefully put some pressure on his life total. I may even attack with my uh, factory as well. So I'm going to drop to 11 here. Hopefully he cannot play out another creature. Although he does have the Phantasmal Forces in hand, but I don't think he's going to play it out now because I've got the trike. Oh, I'm going to kill. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Or not. I'm not sure if this was the good line of play, to be honest. And now I can attack also with the Lana, I guess. I can, I can deal some more damage. I can go some more in the aggro route, which is not too bad. And it still has one counter on it. So there is a Psyblast, though, on my life total. So super aggressive with those Psyblasts. I'm going to drop to seven next turn. He can put me on, on four. Oh, no. Does he have another Psyblast? I'm toast. Oh, does he have another Psyblast? Don't have another Psyblast. Another Psyblast. I'm getting... What's going on here? I was doing okay. Come on. And, and this is why Agro Blue is so good. And remember, all these cards he's playing here, I mean, you can just get them uh, as a reprint. Anyway, it's a best of five. I still have time. We're going to shuffle up. Wish me luck in game number three. Game number three. Okay, so I've lost the first two games. And I see a side blast in my opponent's hand again. I mean, that card is going to give me nightmares. Actually, his hand, it's not that great. He's got a lot of lands, and I play land destruction in that regard. It's good. Let's look at my hand. Ooh, I don't really like it. Do I see a Dingus Egg in my deck, by the way? That's pretty cool. I didn't know I played that in there. Okay, I'm shuffling up again. So I guess I didn't want to keep it because I've had mana problems before, right? Uh, but then again, I had, well, I had a Forest and a Mishra's Factory. That's it. Yeah, it's not... It's not a lot, and I also didn't have a Lana War Elves or a Birds of Paradise. On the other hand, I did have a green source, so... And my opponent is not playing with land destruction, so maybe I should have kept it. I don't know. Losing two games in a row always makes me kind of... I wouldn't say insecure, but kind of doubt the hands that I keep or draw, whatever. Anyway, here we see my hand now. Okay, this is a lot better. Mox Ruby, Birds of Paradise, Forest, Mishra's Factor. I think I made a good decision keeping it here. So, playing a Birds of Paradise. So, that's going to give me some ramp. And playing my Mox Ruby in a pass. So, at least I've got something on the table. There's just an island, of course, from Yoop. You know, that, that, that 
I mean, he can play Merfolk of the Pearl Trident or Flying Man, turn one. Uh, but I'm not sure, actually, if Merfolk of the Pearl Trident is in here. There's a Stone Rain. I only have one card in hand, though. And remember, he's got a lot of lands, and that's Surrendip Afrit. That's been a huge problem for me. Okay, taking care of another one, attacking for two. So, I mean, I, I'm doing what my deck wants to do. This is basically the idea of the deck. But now I have to have a follow-up, right? Strip, okay, just taking care of all his lands. So making it really tough for Yoop. Remember, he, he started with four lands in his opening hand, maybe. Was it five, perhaps? Anyway, he had a lot of lands, so I'm expecting him just to drop another island here. Actually, a Mishra's Factory instead, but he cannot use it, so I'm fine with that. And it looks like he's starting to get a little bit nervous. Thinking, shit, I don't have any lands, what am I going to do? Tapping four. There's a living plane killing his only land. Yeah, now I kind of have this in the bag, I feel. There is a land, though. It doesn't matter. And his lands also have summoning sickness. I'm going to animate and just attack with my 2-2, probably. So putting him on 14 and a pass. Okay, he is finding another land though. It does have summoning sickness, but he's got two one ones now. And he's actually drawn a lot of lands because look at his graveyard. I've destroyed four of his lands already. Oh, pyrotechnics. This is so brutal. And now you can, what I like, I mean, I'm sorry, Yoop, that you have to go through this, but what I like about this match is now you can really see what my deck wants to do and how it's supposed to work. Right, just really brutally destroying all the lands of my opponent and using that combination of um, Living Plane and Pyrotechnics. So I'm putting everything in order that my lands are in front so I can start attacking with those. Gonna animate, of course, my factory. And I'm just gonna attack for four points here. Gonna put them on eight. And pass the turn. Yeah, there's, there's probably nothing Yoop can do here. He's played so many lands. He kept a hand with a lot of lands, knowing he, he's playing against land destruction. And, you know, from the get-go, I was on the play at that strong opener. I think taking the mulligan was a very good decision. And uh, now I'm attacking for four again. He's going to drop to four. I don't think there's a way out here for my opponent there. I mean, this can buy him time, though. This can buy him time, because he's got that one land. And pay six. Oh, there's a trike. That's just dirty. So now I can destroy the one land. Oh, <laughs> that is just dirty. I'm really, I'm really not giving my opponent even the smallest chance to kind of get back into this. There, 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 there's nothing he can do. Discarding the counter spell. And now I'm untapping here. Yeah, tapping four. I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm playing a Knowledge Vault. I can just, I probably just want to show the Knowledge Vault in the deck. Because <laughs> I got to give credits to Yoop here. Yoop kind of inspired me to, to start playing with Knowledge Vault. And look at his hand. He actually didn't need that much mana, but I, he had no chance. No chance. So that means it's 2-1. So at least we're going to have a game number four. Game number four, here we go. So I'm still behind here, 2-1, but we're doing a best of five. There we see the hand of my opponent. Counterspell, ooh, a Surrender Jin. That is so cool. And an Old Man of the Sea. I'm really liking this deck. And uh, to be honest, I thought it would be more standard aggro blue, but it's turning out to be something way cooler. Starting with the Mox here, pretty uh, good start for me into a Sylvan. Ooh, taking it back, actually. Yeah, that's a better line of play. Okay, that is that is better. And I'm uh, playing that Sylvan. And hopefully I can draw some extra cards now. Which is risky against that kind of the aggro build of my opponent, but still. Going through the first three, taking an extra card. It's taking all of them. Okay. Oh, that's risky. Going to, to 12. What am I going to do here? 
Ice Storm probably. Okay, taking care. Are we going to see Counter Spell? Okay, fair enough. That was to be expected, I guess. Playing a land, tapping it directly. Llanowar Elves. Uh, maybe I should have played the Llanowar before to see if he would have countered it. There's an Old Man of the Sea. Oh, he can counter my, or sorry, he can steal my Llanowar. That is pretty sweet. I love to see an Old Man of the Sea. It's so cool. It's a card from Arabian Nights. It's a 2-3 creature. And uh, it can steal a creature that has power equal or less than the Old Man. So you can tap it, you can steal a creature, then you can keep the old man tapped, to, and, then you, and then you also keep the creature. If you untap it, it goes back. Unfortunately, here there's a lightning bolt, and there's a stone rain, and I can still animate my factory and attack with my elf. Tapping a green instead. Okay, there is a Llanowar elf. Sorry, a uh, Birds of Paradise using my Llanowar elf to animate my factory, attacking for two, putting you on 18. And there is the Surrender Perfreet again. It's, it's so my nemesis in this matchup. It's so good against my deck. And I definitely need to find a solution for those uh, Arabian aggro creatures. Obviously, City in a Bottle is kind of a no-brainer. Put that in the sideboard. We played these matches without sideboard, by the way. A Red Elemental Blast is also a great solution against these uh, aggressive blue decks. I mean, I got a lot of mana. I'm doing quite well. The problem is I'm on 12 because I took extra cards with the Sylvan. That means he only has to hit me four times. And remember, he's killed me in two of the games with the Psionic Blast. So that Psionic Blast is also close as well. Look at this. Surrender Jin next to the Surrender Afrit. This is so cool to see. I mean, this is so sweet. I mean, I'm, he's going to kill me, but I'm, I'm still liking it. So I'm destroying his factory because with the Surrender Jinn, he has to sacrifice lands. And if the, if the land is an island, he takes three damage from the Surrender Jinn. So at least he takes some damage, but I'm on nine. He's going to deal eight points of damage next turn. I'm going to be on one. Well, I can chum block with the, with the bird. So Birds of Paradise on the Surrender Jinn, I guess, would be the best move. So he's taking a damage. Now he's got a second island. He is going to tap them though, but he's going to sack the islands. So he's going to drop to 13. What is he going to do with the second blue? Play a boomerang on the bird. Oh, that's bad. That is bad. I'm so going to go to Pound Town. He's going to draw a card for turn. He's going to attack for eight. He's going to put me on one. Oh, man. I mean, maybe I played too aggressively with the Sylvan, but, you know, I felt like I was in the momentum. Oh, man. I mean, he's on 13. I could attack him, could put him on 9. Looks, it looks like I'm going to do something else, or I'm thinking about it. I mean, I can attack him for 5, put him on 8, but then still he's going to survive. Tapping 5... Okay, Pyrotechnics. And then I can play the birds, chump with the birds. And I can also attack him for two still, I guess. Put him on... Put him on 11. But I think... Is he going to counter this? If, if he's got a counter... Yeah, he's got this. He's got a counter spell. He's got a counter spell. Like my only way out was now recast the birds. Kill the Serenip. Um, but that's that. And, and, and you, man, congratulations on what a beautiful deck you brought to the table. And uh, I've got to apologize with my brief introduction because I was in the understanding that you were just playing uh, your regular blue aggro, which I love, by the way. I enjoy playing it myself. But um, you've got some more very, very cool cards in your deck, including the Serenip Jin and, of course, the Old Man of the Sea and the Phantasmal Forces. Super, super cool. Thank you for bringing this deck to the table. And also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, if you enjoyed this match, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any advice for me on how to kind of tweak my deck, obviously adding some Cydia bottles in the sideboard would be quite good. And maybe also 
you know, maybe I should add a fireball in there as well. I think I'm actually playing without fireball, which is which is kind of stupid because it's really, really good next to a uh, living plane. Anyway, I really enjoyed this match. I would like to thank you for watching. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to please like, uh, share this video and comment. All these things help and are completely free. And then there's one other thing that you can do as well. And that is join the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can support the channel financially. And one of the perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of each video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.